cities are man-made habitats very recent in natural history. We build them to organize ourselves in larger communities, more productive in industry and trade. All over the world, they are meant to protect us from the unpredictable nature of our planet. Great cities thrive, generating their own pulse 24 hours a day to satisfy our every need. Over the ages, they have become synonymous of departing from wildlife as we have become more successful in isolating ourselves from the natural world. But we are in a living planet that is ever changeable and nature keeps finding ways to prevail. We are now in the west tip of Europe, in the sunny capital of Portugal, a city known for its good weather, its people and its history. It was built thousands of years ago, facing the Atlantic Ocean and surrounded by the Tagus, the mightiest river in Iberia, with its enormous estuary right by the city. This is the city of Lisbon. Lisbon's whole existence is tightly linked to the Tagus River. When the city was first built, around 1200 BC, the estuary was a great provider of food resources, and that is what may have attracted the first inhabitants towards this specific location. But even before that, there were those who were already taking advantage of the abundance of resources provided by the estuary. Several marine bird species have been coming to the Tagus estuary for thousands of years, and some have even established dormitories in the city's harbors, like the great cormorants. There is plenty of food to go around, and predators patrol the riverside for mollusks, seashells, and fish. The sanderlings travel great distances from their breeding sites in the Arctic to here and some choose to spend the winter near Lisbon. Together with the turnstones, they clean the rocks, carefully looking for any food they can find. For the bird species, the riverside keeps providing a reliable source of food. For us humans, it is a place to come, relax and enjoy the view. Lisbon is sprinkled with many gardens, which are easily kept and vigorous due to the city's temperate climate. Lisboners appreciate a walk in the park now and then, but the gardens don't belong to them. The true inhabitants of the gardens are the birds. This is the jay. It is a corvid, and recent research has put forward that it is the most intelligent bird species of the planet. It has amazing learning capacities, and it has evolved to seize different opportunities that may arise, a valuable skill in any city. To spot one will not be that easy, although they are probably closer than you think. Due to its topography and its specific position, Lisbon has an impressive variety of bird species, some who are resident and some who are just passing by. All sorts of passerines of all colors, sizes and shapes can be spotted all over, always in a hurry in their daily chores. However well animals may adapt, cities are not a preferred place for wildlife. But recognizing the importance of being close to nature, 
and of creating the conditions for a good quality of life for the inhabitants of the capital, in 1868, the first intents were expressed to grow an entire forest in one of the city's largest hills. But it wasn't until the mid-20th century that a great forestation campaign succeeded in creating the Monsanto Forest Park, a 900-hectare forest right in the middle of Lisbon. Today, it is a true safe haven for many species, and it even has protected areas within the forest where human presence is highly restricted. And all over the Monsanto, we can see the positive effects of this forestation endeavor. This is the red squirrel. They can be found in the treetops, looking for food in the many species of trees that were planted here. The oaks, cork oaks, pine trees, all serve as a food source for this curious little mammal. The red squirrel was brought to extinction in Portugal in the 16th century. The reasons for this are unclear. In the 1980s, they started to come back to the north of Portugal, possibly coming in from Spain. And in 1993, scientists introduced them in the Monsanto, hoping they would establish a breeding population, and so they did. The forest may have started with human hand, but it now has a life of its own, and for some, it is a dangerous place. Predators are always alert. The thick vegetation provides perfect hunting conditions for foxes, owls and other animals to prey on smaller creatures. Under the blades of grass, there is a smaller world, invisible to most of us, but nonetheless important for this small ecosystem. Amphibians, mollusks and insects form an important layer of the food chain, and they too need conditions to thrive here. One of the most common predators of Lisbon is the common kestrel. It is a falcon, and it has instincts that rarely fail. The kestrels have an amazing ability to adapt, and although they can be found in the Monsanto, they have far outgrown the forest. In the outskirts of Lisbon, they are often spotted hovering in the sky, looking for prey. In great residential areas, Small, abandoned patches of land hide small prey that the kestrel can easily hunt. The open ground is perfect for just that. They have occupied these populated areas and don't seem to mind being close to humans. Sometimes a bit too close. In the wild, these birds nest in high cliffs away from the dangers of the ground. So a vase on a window of an apartment building is not as strange as it may appear. It certainly looks apprehensive around people, but despite that, it has chosen this spot to breed. It is an effective shelter high up in the building, and it is where it will stay for several weeks now with hope of raising its young. The historical parts of Lisbon depict its glorious age of the discoveries and amazing travels to the east and west through the seas. Today, the monuments from that golden age bring in turn other kinds of travelers eager to learn more about the city. Thousands of foreigners fill the streets of the old parts of town every year to visit what is on offer. And not all of them go back to where they come from. Some have chosen to stay. This exotic creature is the rose-ringed parakeet. Looking at it, one gets the impression that it is not from around here. In fact, this species is originally from India and were first brought to Europe as pets. But some of them, either escaping their cages or abandoned by their owners, have managed to breed successfully in many big cities of Western Europe, now number in the thousands 
in cities like London or Barcelona. In Lisbon, there are not as many yet, although they are considered an invasive species, they have yet to cause problems here. They are a social bird, which lives in numbers on large trees, and they can be spotted feeding in groups. In this case, they are in a busy street of a neighborhood on the edge of the city, indifferent to the passing cars. Parakeets are notoriously intelligent and capable of maintaining complex social relations. The males of this species have a distinct collar around the neck, which gives the name to the species. Their intelligence, once again, is paramount to their ability to adapt to urban landscapes, and it is also what may bring us problems. Exotic species often cause problems in the countries they come to occupy. The unbalance they bring to the natural way of things can cause irreparable damage, so it's not a good idea to release pets into the wild. So far, the parakeets haven't caused any problems, and we can enjoy their colorful presence in the streets of Lisbon. There are around one and a half million people living here. The city must provide for its inhabitants. Everyone needs accommodation, an opportunity to make a living, and to be treated if in need of medical assistance. And for the inhabitants that can't speak for themselves, there is a very special clinic. For the sake of preserving biodiversity, the people of Lisbon have created a safe haven for wildlife within the city's limits. In this restricted area, the Lisbon's Wildlife Recovery Center has a team of veterinaries specialized in treating and assisting in the recovery of wild animals with the purpose of releasing them back to the wild. Running since 1997, it takes in animals from around the country, not only Lisbon. All sorts of animals come in every day, mostly birds, but other groups are also represented. Due to their abundance in the area, the common kestrels are often brought to the clinic and today one is being treated by the team. This kestrel was brought in by the authorities, found injured by the side of the road. The municipality is committed to treating wildlife with the best means possible. And the veterinaries are doing everything for this animal to go back to the skies. With luck, it will be healed soon and the team will have been successful yet again. We are now back at where the kestrels chose to nest, in the outskirts of Lisbon. A month has passed and we are now in mid-spring. The couple has successfully bred six kestrel chicks, a very good clutch size for this species. Only a few weeks old, they have yet to learn to fly and still much prefer the safety of the window. The brothers are changing rapidly and their instincts grow steadily every day. When they sense the presence of their parents bearing food, the competition is fierce. The larger brothers get ahead, and the weaker ones will only feed after the first are satisfied. It is already a cruel world for the chicks, but these ones are getting all the attention from their parents and have everything going for them. Nonetheless, they will soon be forced out of this territory and will have to disperse to find their own hunting ground. At the end of the day, Lisbon's beauty is breathtaking. The dusk fills everything with color and Lisboners start to settle for the night. In this particular city, the link between man and nature has not yet been completely broken 
and it is up to everyone to make sure that link is kept and safeguarded. Lisbon's wildlife is too precious to be discarded, especially for its people, and its protection and preservation are in their hands.